Hey everybody, my name is Joe Pivarunas. I'm the founder and managing editor of Nanalyze. We're a boutique media and research firm covering disruptive technologies for a broad audience of retail and institutional investors across the globe. Today we're going to talk about metal 3D printing stocks. We've listed three names here, Desktop Metal, Velo 3D, and Mark Forged. All three of these companies went public using a special purpose acquisition company. And what we want to do is take a look at where they sit today. So when companies go public using a SPAC, oftentimes they don't provide very much information. And now that all three of these companies have filed their 10Ks, we have a lot of information that we can go through to start comparing them. Now, the first thing that we want to make note of is there are a lot of players in the metal 3D printing space. This chart was taken from an article we did with Jewel Printing. They're in the upper left hand corner actually the company that that offers dual printing is called digital alloys and we sat down with um ceo there and had a good talk about the 3d printing space what jewel is doing is a low cost method of metal 3d printing and you can see all the different technologies on offer here what you should take away from this is that there isn't any clear winner so here's an example of the cost to print a part in titanium using these different methods, again, taken from several years ago. And jewel printing is listed at the bottom as the least expensive, but perhaps it may not be as accurate or it may need extra finishing. So the choice of which method that you use depends on your use case. And as we were told, these various technologies are applicable to various use cases. So it remains to be seen how many companies are winners and how many companies are losers. Now, when we start to compare these three companies we're talking about today, all publicly traded, first thing we can do is look at simple valuation ratio. We take the market cap of the company, we divide it by the annualized revenues, and that would be last quarter times four. So for desktop metal, today's market cap divided by annualized revenues gives you a simple valuation ratio of seven. Well, what does that mean? What that lets us do is start to do relative comparisons. So when we look at all three of the companies that we're gonna talk about today, you can see that Velo 3D is very overpriced based on this simple valuation ratio. And not just that, but also we took a look, this was in a past article not too long ago called Value Traps in SPACs. And we looked at the pre-SPAC funding round for a handful of SPACs and compared the current market cap to that valuation. Velo 3D was one of the highest. And I'll put a link to that article in the description of this video so you can read it for yourselves. But we believe Velo 3D is significantly overvalued. We would never invest in a firm with a valuation ratio over 40. And we certainly would expect that company to trade alongside the valuation of its two competitors. Now, why would Velo 3D be so overpriced? We think there may be some elements of meme stock going on here. And certainly SpaceX comes into play. So SpaceX is a key customer, the biggest customer for Velo 3D. We're gonna talk about that in a second, but first I wanted to look at their revenue streams. So you see here, 3D printer sales accounted for the majority of their revenue streams, what about 84% in 2021. They're selling a $1.7 million printer. They're either selling it outright or selling it via lease, which is the recurring payment that you see here. And then we have support services at around 10%, a number that's growing in proportion to the other two revenue streams over time. Now, when you look at the cost of each of these revenue streams, the cost of services actually exceeds the revenues being brought in. Why is that a problem? Well, when we look at investing in firms that sell expensive machinery, we want to see some sort of recurring revenue that supports that. So as you grow your install base over time and you get to a Lumina situation where you have 20,000 machines installed, suddenly a large chunk for Illumina, it's somewhere around 70, upwards of 70% of your revenue comes from high margin consumables. Those could be software or in Illumina's case, it's different, it's not, but you could have a software subscription, you could have services, you could have actual consumables, the, the old uh, razor and blade model. But here we're not seeing that for Velo 3D, they're establishing 
consumables revenue, high margin consumables revenue to support themselves down the road when they exhaust the market for $1.7 million printers. Now, going back to SpaceX, they are a large chunk of business for Velo 3D. In 2020, they were 41%, and that's down to 28% of 2021 revenues. That's great. Here we've put a timeline which shows the orders SpaceX has made for Velo 3D printers and the number that have been delivered. And for 2022, they're actually expecting SpaceX as a percentage of total revenues to increase. So we think that perhaps investors, retail investors in particular, are seeing the name SpaceX and ascribing a lot of value to that key customer when in fact, having 60% or more of your revenues come from three customers, which is the case for Velo 3D, is not a good position to be in. I believe Velo has about 18 customers as of the end of 2021 compared to 10 the year before. So they're working on expanding that. They sell directly to manufacturers. They don't use distributors. So that's great, but it's just too risky a stock for us right now. And it's certainly uh, valued too high. Now, when we look at Mark Forged, this is an interesting company. And we did a piece on them before. I'll put that also in the uh, description of this video, but they have 10,000 machines, an install base of 10,000 machines, which is very significant. No customer accounting for over 10% of overall revenues and a very large gross margin. What we tried to do here was to take a look and say, all right, 30% of this company's revenues in 2021 were said to be recurring. What they're putting here is consumables and services. Well, what are what's the margin like for consumables and services? They don't break that down. Fortunately, Velo 3D does, and that's how we could get the insights into the profitability of each segment. Here, we don't get that for Mark Forge, but we get the bigger picture number, which is total revenue. And you can see in the bottom table here, total revenue minus cost of revenue, that's your gross profit. And then that's referred to as a gross margin, all right? So we can, we suspect that gross margin is very high because of consumables and services, in which case they're selling software, a proper services model with a one to three year contract, and of course, consumables, fiber composites and whatnot. Mark Forge is actually not a pure play metal 3D printing firm because they, they are the only firm in the industry, they say, that offers a platform you can use for metal or composites and switch them out. So when we look at this same gross margin number for Velo 3D, it's very small at 18%. So that just gives you some indication. You know, we don't like to focus on profitability for growth firms. We're more interested in revenue growth and capturing market share. But now that these firms have amassed probably as much easy cash as they're gonna get from their SPACs, cash will be harder to raise and the ability for them to be profitable down the road comes into focus. So Mark Forge, although they're the smallest, we would never invest in a firm with a market cap of less than a billion dollars, Mark Forge seems to be very attractive based on their business model. And then that brings us to desktop metal. I'm not gonna talk much about this company. We did a video not too long ago. You can see it in our YouTube channel. I did a video on desktop metal. I think some people had asked some questions around Velo 3D. That seems to be a quite popular uh, company for whatever reason. But in that video, we talked about a number of things. Uh, the, the success of the P50 production platform, which has finally been released at the end of 2021. That's something we want some more color around. We'd like to see a breakdown of revenues for desktop. They acquired 10 companies in 2021. Well. Maybe they were able to aggregate revenues, but we wanna see some granularity. They got into different industries such as dental and whatnot, healthcare. We wanna see granularity around what they're actually doing. We'd love to see the recurring revenue breakdown provided for them, though it's gonna be difficult because they seem to have gotten, into, gotten themselves into a lot of different things. So we're gonna wait for the consolidation to happen. I think they're, uh, last 10K mentioned something about providing segment granularity in the first quarter of 2022. So we'll look forward to seeing how that plays out. And then lastly, one thing to note is that all three of these companies did a great job of beating 
the revenue estimates they put on their glossy SPAC deck. So often you see just a company will say anything to get to raise that money. And these companies actually exceeded in all cases, the estimates they gave on their SPAC decks. That's awesome. And then on the bottom here, these are the 2022 estimates given on those SPAC decks. So let's hope they're on track as well. And you can see how they're, these companies are generating some meaningful money around um, metal 3D printing. Now, when it comes to how we're playing this thesis, we follow three areas of 3D printing, 3D bioprinting, metal 3D printing, and this third one, distributed manufacturing. This is where we've decided to place our bets because metal 3D printing is just one component of a much bigger trend, which is to distribute manufacturing. And there's a number of business models you can use, like Exometry is primarily software where they farm out jobs to different other firms. And then you have Proto Labs, which takes all the manufacturing in house. So they're trying to uh, move towards the Exometry business model as well. So this thesis of distributed manufacturing works regardless of who's building the best 3D printer at any given time, because it takes advantage of all the different use cases you can use metal 3D printing for across the different types of technology. So this is the direction that our investments have taken. Uh, that brings us up to the end of this presentation for today. Thank you very much for your time. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and then post your questions in the comments section so that we can reply to them. And as I said, I'll link to all the articles used in this research piece in the description of this video. Thank you very much for your time.